Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range and I'm joined here by a special guest from Germany, Alex. Now he really tried to insist that Kurt Kell, my German cousin, Hello. carry out this interview but uh, he got a bit shirty and said no 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 I have to be back in Stuttgart to see Kraftwerk so uh, sorry it's me. <laughs> so not a problem. let's say that uh, Kurt who lives in Germany mm -hmm. wants to acquire a firearm. Mm -hmm. What hoops does he have to jump through? How does it work? First question is, what kind of license does he want to have? Is he a target shooter? Is he a hunter? Is he a collector? Let's start with probably the biggest one. Let's say he's a target shooter. Okay. So, if you want to become a target shooter in Germany, you would have to jump through some hoops and loops. And it starts that you will have to join a target shooting club. Mm -hmm. Like in most of Europe. Yeah, probably. And um, it takes you 12 months. You have to be a member of this club for 12 months. You will need 18 proofs of shooting practice. So normally you would have your Schießbüchlein. Um, shooting booklet. Yeah, shooting booklet, where you note that you have shot this and this rifle or pistol or whatever. And you would also have to do a little test. So would he be shooting club guns or guns owned yes. by other members? Um, normally, gun clubs have their own guns, like club guns, and um, sometimes other members are kind enough to loan their personal guns to newcomers, but normally they would have to use club guns, mm -hmm. yeah, because they are not allowed to own a firearm by themselves yet, so they would have to train with foreign or club guns. So after doing that for 12 months, which is quite a long time, as I know myself, which is also very annoying because you are not normally allowed to adjust the firearm to your personal preference um, because Aim it's... Off. Yeah. So it's a little bit difficult. Um, but anyway, when you have done that, you would also have to do a test whenever you want. You can do that right at the first day. You can do it one day after you have passed this 12-month period. It's called um, Sachkunde test. It's basically a, a test where you, you get uh, to know the law, firearm law, uh, safety and all this stuff. So it's a mix of law and technical stuff. And when you have done that, um, you can apply for a license. But first of all, you would have to buy a safe. Ah, storage. Safe. Storage is very important in Germany. And um, storage law have changed for several, uh, several times. Right, um, when you go back several years, um, you would have different classes for different safes. Um, so when I started shooting, I still have my old safes, luckily, because the old safes are way, way cheaper. Grandfathered into the system. Yes, right? yes, yes. Um, I still have my old safes and they ran around 150 euros for a long gun safe. And you are just allowed to store long guns in this kind of safe. It was a class A safe, long gun safe. And for handguns, you would need a class B safe. It was more expensive and normally also very more heavier um, than a long gun safe because it was thicker, they had different safety levels. And nowadays these uh, safes are not good enough anymore for uh, handgun or long gun storage. They can just be used for ammunition storage. So if you are a new target shooter or even if you are an old target shooter like me and you buy a new safe in this old format, you are not allowed to store your guns in this anymore. And you would have to buy a new safe. That is um, a very high um, safety standard and it's called a class, class zero. You now have class zero as a minimum. You also have class one, two and three, which are like bank safe safes, which are really like 300 or 500 kilograms, really heavy. And they're very expensive. So if you want to buy um, a safe that is high enough and wide enough to store a long gun or maybe five long guns, you would probably count around eight to 900 euros for one safe, which fit normally five long guns and yeah, 10 handguns. Okay, so Kurt has done his 12 months probation. He's passed mm -hmm. his uh, Sachkunde Prüfung test. Mm -hmm. He's... Uh, he mortgaged shot. his first. He's, he's done his eighteen shoots. He has mortgaged one of his <laughs> children uh, to buy a safe. Yes. Then what does he do? He applies uh, for 
a license and there are different kind of licenses. I guess Mr. Bloke wants to know what kind of license. What, I mean, yeah, yeah, Kurt very much would like to know <laughs> what he has to do when the time yes. arrives. So you have uh, the green WBK. WBK is Waffensitzkarte, which is basically a gun permit. It's a permit to possess and also to acquire um, because there are several different colors of these kind of permits um, and they differ. If you want to buy a handgun, a handgun or a semi-automatic firearm, it doesn't matter if it's a shotgun or a rifle, you would need the green gun permit. And with this, you could buy a handgun or a semi-automatic rifle. And if you have a yellow card, you can buy either um, a single shot shotgun, like the over and under shotguns that are used in uh, clay shooting, and also a black powder revolvers, and also repeating uh, long guns, for example, common bolt actions. And um, the problem is that normally when you are a common target shooter, you are only allowed to own two handguns, two handguns and three semi-automatic long guns. However, um, I don't know if it's the same in different European countries. I know that in the Netherlands there's only one shooting, as shooting association. In Germany there are several. And the biggest one, the DSB, which is also the oldest one, it was founded in 1871, I guess, so when Germany was founded. Um, they don't offer uh, shooting drills for semi-automatic guns, at least in my state. Uh, so, everything, so everything's linked into shooting a particular discipline which is yes. officially recognized. You always have to prove a need, why you need this firearm. And self-defense is not a need, uh, so not a justification. The only justification in Germany for owning firearms is target shooting, hunting, collecting, and for special persons who are very in, in danger, uh, you get a concealed carry permit. But these numbers are really very low, and I guess we come to that mm -hmm. topic a little bit later. Um, so normally you would have to apply for your license at the police station, but you would also need some paperwork from your shooting association. So can you get a green... WBK and the yellow one yes. at the same time. Yes, you can. And um, the only problem is that uh, you're also not allowed to buy more than two guns every six months. So if you sh start with nothing and you decide, hmm, okay, I want to shoot a handgun and I want to shoot a um, long gun, well, you can just buy one handgun and one long gun and then you would have six, uh, to wait six months until you can buy the ne next batch of guns. Okay. And if you are unfortunate and are only a member of the DSB, you are not allowed to buy semi-automatic rifles because there is no shooting drill for that. Okay. Uh, on the topic of semi-automatic long guns, mm -hmm. um, the uh, the new EU gun law has gone into force in Germany, or is going into force in Germany now. What will the, what's, probably yes. What's the um, the issue going to be with magazine capacity there? How are they uh, implementing that? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, it's just a look into the magic crystal ball right now. Um, it should have been debated, I think, yeah, yesterday, but it wasn't in the parliament. So I don't know why it was not debated, uh, but probably they will change the uh, draft a little bit. But it was planned that they would outlaw high capacity magazines. So standard 30 round magazines would be outlawed. You could grandfather them in. You would have to register them. It would be very interesting because no magazine has a number normally, uh, unless you have a very special magazine like a K31 magazine, which is not a high capacity mm -hmm. magazine, but okay, you know what I mean. And um, yeah, and it's very interesting how you should um, prove that you bought your magazine before the special date that will be the date, I think it was in 2017. So you would have to prove that you bought this 30 round magazine for your modern sporting rifle, for an AR-15, for example, um, before this date. Um, if you don't have your invoice, how can you prove that? And I they, don't know. They, 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 were, they, they, they were uncontrolled items. Yes. Sold between individual. individual. They were free items. Anyway, so, so this, is, this is a bit of a hypothetical because we don't know how this is yes, going to go down. But so an AR-15 with only 10 round magazines would still be allowed. Yes, and uh, um, an AR-15 with 30 rounds is already outlawed. It, you can 
own the 30 round magazine and you can own your AR-15, but if you combine it on a normal target shooting range and you are just a target shooter, you get caught, you, use lo you, use, you lose your license, you will get your guns taken away by force. That's if a you phrase you're going to hear a lot. Yeah, probably in this uh, video. So um, I know about one guy who in fact get caught, uh, got caught with a high capacity magazine and it's in already in German gun law that you're not allowed to use a um, semi-automatic firearm with a magazine capacity over 10 rounds. So for example, if you have um, a standard shotgun, semi-automatic shotgun with a tubular magazine, you're allowed to load 10 in the tubular magazine and one in the chamber. That's okay, but you're not allowed to have a tubular magazine of 12 or whatever rounds. Okay, so um, I think that's pretty much covered all of the major points of um of target shooting. So what if uh, Kurt decides that this is... Um, Bollocks? Yeah, that this is far too much hassle and perhaps he's going to get in with some... Uh, he's got good good dress sense, does Kurt. Uh, mm -hmm. Perhaps he'd like to wear some Loden. Like, I'm rather <laughs> partial to Loden myself. I'd like to wear some Loden and a little hat with a feather in it and uh, <laughs> cavort around the countryside um, yes. um, bashing Bambi. Mm -hmm. Well, if he wants to become a hunter, um, he can do so. Um, the only problem is that he better be very wealthy or he has a lot of free time on his hands because uh. if you want to become a hunter in Germany you would also have to pass a test and this test uh, you can you have two ways of passing this test one way is to uh, do a so-called crash course where you learn all the information that you need to pass this test um, by your own and then you just book an appointment uh, write the test, hopefully uh, pass the test and then you get it, but most people don't uh, because it's like, I, I think there are like 2,000 or 2,500 questions that you need to know and it ranges from uh, animals also to uh, plants and uh, when you are allowed to hunt these animals, uh, seasons and all this stuff and also a lot of biology, so how many teeth has animal XYZ, whatever. This seems to be a deliberately difficult bar to entry. It is. And these crash courses um, where you learn from early in the morning to very late in the evening for, I think, two or three weeks, they're very expensive. So we are talking about three or four thousand euros here uh, for the only uh, for, for the test. If you screw it up, well, bad luck. You have to take the test again. Uh, or you can just go to your regional Higering, which is um, the hunting association. What's the English word for that? Well, in English, we don't have such a thing. Hunt hunters Club. In Switzerland, they're the, the, the young yeah. and the hunt yeah, hunting yeah. clubs. Uh, let's say hun Hunters Club. And um, you can do your stuff there, but it will take you roughly nine months to do so. So you would have uh, evening school two or three times a week. Uh, I think two or three hours on this day then. And then you would go through all the different material and at the end you will be done and hopefully pass your test. However, if you are a hunter, you have some benefits and privileges that normal target shooters don't have. For example, if I am only a target shooter in Germany and I want to own a Ruger 1022, that is fine, a normal Ruger 1022. But if I want to modify it and make it a tactical Ruger 1022, an evil uh, assault rifle, so to say, I'm not allowed to do so. If I get caught, I will lose my license and all my guns. However, if I'm, a ta um, if I'm not a target shooter, but I'm, but I'm a hunter, I can buy as many long guns as I want. I don't have to wait um, after buying two long guns, as target shooters do. I can also buy different guns that I'm not allowed to buy as a target shooter. For example, as a target shooter, I'm allowed to buy a Kalashnikov clone in 223, but not in 7.65, uh, 762 by 39. Sorry about that. Um, because, in fact, it seems to be that the 223 Remington is less lethal than the evil Kalashnikov ammunition, which is, of course, not the case. But anyway. So there's an arbitrary limit of 40 millimeters on case length. For yes, it is. And firearms. the German uh, lawmakers, they just forgot that 22 rimfire exists and uh, that gives many target shooters a very hard time. Because if you want to shoot, for example, Ipsic mini rifle, which is a totally fine um, shooting drill and normally uses um, folding stocks and 
stuff like that, you're not allowed to do that. You're basically, uh, you have to use a fixed stock. You're not allowed to use modern ergonomics uh, because then you will get in trouble with the law. Uh, it's uh, really annoying. And um, oh, just a point to, to come back on. A while ago, Germany had uh, rules that nothing could look even vaguely military at all. So we ended up several with years ago abominations like, uh, like the SL8, eight, yeah, from which is just awful. It um, is. So what's the situation now? Um, well, you can buy an AR-15 that looks like an AR-15. That is fine if it uses a case length or if it uses a cartridge that is longer than 40 millimeters. So two to three is fine. If you want an AK, you would have to buy an AK in 308 or in 223, not in the original Kalashnikov caliber or in 22. That's also just prohibited for normal target shooters. For hunters, it's fine, but for target shooters, it's not okay. And um, also, I forgot to mention that, uh, of course, as a target shooter, you are allowed to own more than two handguns and more than three semi-automatic long guns, but you are forced to participate in championships. So, Like Holland. Yeah, th like the Netherlands. And the Netherlands, um, they have very uh, horrific gun law because they are only allowed to uh, own five uh, firearms in general. That's um, To go beyond that, you have to be competing at national level. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Disciplines. So and keep it up every year. Yeah, so um, I own more than these two uh, handguns and more than three semi-automatic long guns and I uh, participate in uh, championships and you also have to watch out um, if you want to participate in a championship, for example, in the Netherlands. I live close to the border in, uh, to the Netherlands. Uh, you would also need a Europäische Feuerwaffenpass, which is uh, basically a European gun license. Um, I can take uh, my sporting guns from Germany to another country, but I basically uh, need this document. If I get caught without this document, I lose my license. Um, so hunters, how many, how many guns can hunters own then? Well, normally they can own two handguns. Sometimes, and some police agencies, they are allowing three handguns, um, one for Fallenjagd, which mm. is, um, lit if, if you set traps and you want to kill an animal that is sit sitting in the trap and you um, kill it with a 357 Magnum, the trap will be gone. So they will uh, allow a special 22 pistol, for example, for this kind of um, hunting. But normally two handguns and long guns, as many as you want and as many as you can afford. You can basically, as a hunter, you can go into a gun store and say, well, I want these 10 rifles, these 20 shotguns, and I will pay with my credit card. You can do that as a hunter. Hmm. That's quite neat. So, uh, yes. Interesting. So, should we move on to collecting? Kurt's decided that he doesn't have uh, three weeks and several <laughs> thousand euros to spend, uh, so maybe collecting's more for him. Yes, uh, well, uh, that's unfortunate because as a coll collector you will probably also need a lot of money. Um, depending on your collection, for example, if you want to collect German military long guns and handguns. Um, that is quite an extensive collection because you would have to exactly narrow down what you want to collect. You cannot just say, well, I'm collecting firearms right now. That's too broad of a topic. You would have to say, well, I want to collect um, Walter uh, firearms from 1910 to, I don't know, 1945. That's a special collecting field, and that's okay. If you want to start another collecting field, for example, now you want to collect PO8 Lugers, you would have to at least finish your first collection field by 50 to 75%. Wow. Uh, of course, there are always some prototypes and very expensive guns. Uh, for example, if you collect Lugers, there were like five or six prototype guns that were delivered to the United States government for field trials. It's not expected that you buy this kind of unicorn gun. Uh, that's excluded. But normally, you would sh at least show that you have almost finished your first collector's field until you move on to the second one. Okay. And uh, let's let's say that he 
gets a kind of skill? Does he have to join a club or does he have to? No, uh, he does not have to join a club, but he would still have to prove that he is uh, proficient with firearms. So mm -hmm. he needs this test, Sachkunde. And um, he will probably, depending on the police agency, would also probably need uh, a special safe room. So not only safes, but a special room designed as a safe. Um, a friend of mine, he has this kind of spe uh, special gun room and it, it includes, I think, uh, very thick walls, special walls, um, and also um, a safe door. So it's basically a door from a bank, well, which is very expensive, of course. Of course. Yeah. And normally you would also need um, um, uh, a special safety alarm that's linked to either a private um, safety company, a security company, or the police itself. Mm. So also very expensive field and um, if you decide well my first uh, field of collecting should be German machine guns forget it you are not going to get the permission for that so let's say that, that he gets a reasonably broad thing such as German second world war firearms he's several he's several non full autos in what what hoop does he have to jump through for a full auto hmm Good question. Um, first of all, I forgot to mention, uh, when you want to uh, define your uh, field of collecting, you would also have to write uh, like um, a university paper thesis why this field is worth collecting. You can either write it by yourself if you are familiar with academic writing because you would also um, do some footnotes and um, uh, state why it is important. For example, uh, I want to collect um, Czech uh, military firearms because it has a very interesting locking system like the EZ-52, something like that. Um, if you're not familiar with that because you have not done any university stuff, you could also pay somebody for you to do that. I mean, ghost written. Yes, uh, basically ghost written and um, these kind of papers are very expensive to, to let them be written. So yeah. Um, what you have to do to jump uh, through any of these hoops and loops, I don't know. Because I guess there are not really that many people who own uh, fully automatic or select fire firearms in Germany as a collector. Um, I have no idea. Maybe 100 or 200 people? I don't know. But the number is really very low. And um, there has never been any single incident in which any of these select fire firearms have been abused by a criminal. So mm. normally collectors are very serious pe uh, people and they don't run around shooting people with that. Are they allowed to even shoot their no. firearms on the range? No. Are they allowed to have ammunition? Well, you can own ammunition if you have a gun in this caliber on your target shooter's license or your hunting license or if you're a reloader. And by the way, if we talk about gun laws in Germany, you'd also have to talk about reloading maybe mm. next, next up. Okay, so uh, collecting uh, doesn't sound much fun either no. from a uh, from that perspective. Actually, of all of all those three, probably the target shooting is the is the less onerous. Well, it depends. Um, if you are a hunter, you the police will no normally not bother you if as long as you pay for your hunting license. Uh, in Germany, you have to pay for the hunting license. Normally, you can pay it uh, once a, once per year or in three years. And um, as long as you pay for it and you have got a valid hunting license, they will not bother you. But if you forget to reapply for your hunting license, um, you will get a visit by the police and they will tell you, well, uh, you have lost your need for your firearms. So either you reapply for your hunter, hunter's license or you will lose your, li your license and then hand in all your guns. Hmm. And are hunters allowed to to hunt on public land, or is it only private land, or how does that work? Um, I am not a German. Uh, I, I I don't have a German hunting license. I have American hunting license, but of course that does not apply in Germany. Um, also, it's very hard. For example, if you are an uh, Italian um, citizen, you might be able to get your Italian hunting license uh, applied to German hunting license, and then you get uh, issued a German hunting license. But normally. Um, you're just allowed to hunt in Germany with your German hunting license. And then you have uh, different uh, possibilities to hunt. Uh, normally, um, you get to know other hunters, and um, most people who hunt are quite rich. And some of these people have um, uh, uh, private land that they have to maintain, and they also have to um, hunt in it. 
because if you have if you own land um, you will have to take care of it um, for example in germany there's now um, a disease uh, afrikanische schweinepest um, african pig disease i guess i don't know the english term but um, yeah that's quite an issue and um, you have to take care of these problems and if you can't do it yourself because you are full-time employed um, you would even have to find other hunters to take care of these problems for you mm. um, by the way hunters are allowed to buy suppressors or silencers uh, target shooters are not these are forbidden items and if you get caught with one with one uh, you, you lose your license and you can also technically use on 22 guns um, uh, air gun mm -hmm. uh, suppressor but if you do that <laughs> you lose your license so air guns yes are they particularly uh, restricted they are restricted to a very weak power that's 7.5 joules that's not very much. That's way below the British 12 foot pounds. Yes, it is. Um, I, I know that there are some air guns that are, for example, in the Netherlands, they shoot um, 100 meters with these kind of very big uh, compressor tanks. Um, these kind of guns exist in Germany. They do. But you need a normal license for any, uh, like any other gun for that. So not many people do that. Because what's the point in having an air rifle if you have to apply it as like for a normal firearm? It doesn't make any sense. Um, you can buy an air gun that is restricted to these uh, 7.5 joules. Um, normally, technically, it could be possible to up them up, up a notch um, by installing an export um, spring. But of course, that's not allowed. If you get caught, you lose li your license if you have one. Uh, you also use your license if you run a red light, if you drive under influence, if you are aggressive by nature, if you punch somebody in the face, um, you probably get drugs. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you wanted to mention age restrictions. Yes, age restrictions, and um, I brought my clever sheet of paper here um, because it might be appealing to the audience to know when you are allowed to start with air guns in Germany. Um, air guns are only allowed if you have a special permit uh, for your kid uh, when it turns 10 years. Uh, before that your kid is not allowed to shoot air guns. Even if it's yours and it's under supervision? Doesn't matter. Does not matter. You cannot uh, fire a shot with an air gun? Not legally in Germany. Um, what some clubs have for use programs um, is that they have so-called laser guns. Uh, they look like Olympic air guns, but they have this aperture thingy that basically it's, it's just a laser. So you point uh, your gun at the target and then you push the trigger and then it goes peep and then you have a shot of laser and that's it. So in my opinion it's not shooting it's basically just aiming because you're shooting with the speed of light and normally nothing is faster than the speed of light so um, there's a lot of no there the, what, what did you call it a shooting uh, compensation um, follow through yes there's no such thing and also no um, no recoil on these kind of guns so it's dubious in my opinion to use it for training so when your kid uh, turns 10 years old um, it can apply while well, you have applied for a special permit and then it will be allowed to shoot air guns under special supervision either from you or a special person by the gun club that needs special training um, Jugendbasisleiter license basically you would have to um, visit um, um, a test and where you learn something about pedagogy and um, how to handle kids and all that stuff and, and when you get your license you're allowed to uh, supervise children so um, when your ch a child turns 12 years um, it, it will be allowed to shoot air guns um, but only with this special supervision of this person mm -hmm. so uh, when it turns 14 uh, this special supervision is not uh, necessary anymore with air guns. If the kid wants to shoot 22 rifles, um, it will have to be 14 years old and will need special supervision. If you want to shoot anything else than 22 long rifle, for example a 9mm handgun, the kid has to be 18 years old. So 
imagine this, um, the Bundeswehr, which is uh, German armed forces, um, I don't know the current uh, state of affairs, but uh, in former times they also went to schools and um, they recruited persons who were under 18 years old. They were trained, for example, when they were 17, they were trained, they were not sent um, to foreign countries, but they were trained on fully automatic, big caliber, gross caliber firearms. But the same person that underwent military training was not allowed to shoot a 9mm handgun on a private gun range until he turned 18. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. And owning a gun, a uh, gross caliber, so everything else than 22 long rifle, you need to be 25 years old. If you want to own it before that, you would have to be 20 years old and you would have to do special psychological test. I did that myself. Because the first two guns that I owned, when or I still own, when I turned 21, um, were a Smith & Wesson 686 in 57 Magnum and a Schweden Mauser, or a M96 Sweet, yeah. Swedish Mauser in 7.5 by 55. And I had to go... 6.5 by 55. Yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> uh, I had to go to see a psychological doctor. He asked me some stupid questions. I gave him some stupid answers and yeah. That cost me a lot of money, of course. Then you get um, a statement that I'm not an aggressive lunatic mm -hmm. and I don't shoot people in the face. And then was that was okay. And then I was granted this um, license. Okay, well. We would have to talk about Kleiner Waffenschein and reloading. We will. Um, let's quickly do reloading. Yes. So reloading in Switzerland and in the UK, uh, what? In Switzerland, it's a it's a free for all for price for it's for your own use. In the UK, you obviously have to have a firearm because you have to have a firearm certificate or a shotgun certificate for the uh, ammunition you're making. But mm. in Germany, it's a little more involved, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So um, many people who shoot on a regular basis they become reloaders because ammunition can be quite expensive depending on the caliber that you're shooting. For example, if you decide uh, to shoot 44 Magnum or any big game cartridges it's wise to reload because ammunition prices are really, really very high. Um, so you would have to have a firearms certificate or firearms license, VBK. And um, then you have to visit a special test where you have to pay money, of course. And you would have to listen and learn a little bit. Uh, it takes normally two weekends. And uh, when you pass the test, you can apply for this reloading certificate and then uh, you will be handed it and it will have um, a number of kilos for example 30 kilos you're allowed to buy 30 kilo uh, kilos of um, what's the english name uh, in propellant. propellant powder um, in these five years if you buy more than these these 30 kilos in it's just made up number some people just get even five kilos in five years, um, you will lose your license because you bought too much powder, propellant. And um, if you want to reload uh, black powder firearms, you would have to do another course. So that's a different, It's you can do a combi course, which is a combined course where you uh, get your license for normal propellant powder and you can also buy black powder then. It depends on what you want to do. Because right now, until now, may, I don't know what's uh, when the European Union uh, firearms directive comes through and becomes German law because they want to make even single shot uh, black powder pistols and long guns uh, have to be registered and treated as normal firearms, uh, which means that you will need a safe. Uh, normally, these firearms are quite inexpensive, so roughly around 100 euros. So if you own one, uh, you would have to buy a safe for 800 euros. So probably most people will say, ah, they will probably not register it or they'll just throw it away. Um, but yeah, if you want to shoot uh, these kind of free guns, these single shot black powder rifles or pistols, you would have to need um, this black powder license. Otherwise you are not allowed to shoot them. And um, also you are only allowed to possess the ammunition that you have guns for. For example, if I only own one 9mm handgun, I am not allowed to own a 38 Special Round. If I get caught with a cartridge in my home, you, you lose your license. And um, That's quite normal though. It's only Switzerland where we're rather more liberal on that. Well, the funny thing is, if you're a reloader and you have a reloaded 
cartridge in a card in, in, in a caliber that is not your own or that doesn't match your own firearms that's fine so well, it's kind of weird and as a um, hunter you are allowed to own every kind of cartridges as long as there are long gun cartridges however that's also a little bit stupid because there are also long guns that shoot 38 special or 9 millimeter by now so what's the point um, have been for 100 years <laughs> i know anyway looking for logic in gun laws is not really uh yes you, you're not onto a good thing so i mean the last big topic is concealed carry now, proper concealed carry is just so rare, like like it is here. It's just so rare. Let's, let's not even really bother well, with that. I, I know that in uh, Saxony, uh, Sachsen, uh, which is a state or Bundesland in Germany, there are 50, in total, 50 people who have a concealed carry license. Well, it's not really many people. However, what's more practical for the average person is the so-called Kleine Waffenschein, the, uh, the uh, little gun license. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the little gun license or the little concealed uh, carry permit um, that allows you to carry um, blank and gas cartridge firing guns. So basically... CS gas. Yes. Um, these are guns that basically look like real guns, um, but they cannot shoot real ammunition. Um, they are also not the same as uh, the trauma guns that are used in Eastern Europe or Russia um, because these shoot small little rubber balls. Um, they j basically just shoot either blank cartridge or a blank cartridge that is uh, mixed with CS uh, gas so, and or do, tear gas. Do pepper sprays fall under the Kleine Waffenschein or are they free? No. Uh, by now they are still free. And um, in late 2015 a lot of people really uh, decide, oh, I need to get a small uh, Kleiner Waffenschein. Um, and many people rushed uh, the police stations to get these kind of um, permits. Uh, you are not forced to own a Kleiner Waffenschein to own a handgun in, in this kind of configuration. If you want to carry it, you have to have this uh, small gun permit. If you want to own it at your home, for example, as uh, defense against burglars but i guess that's a bad idea to fire a tear gas pistol inside your own home because you blow the tear gas in your own face um, you don't need to apply for this license you will have to be 18 years old uh, you have to have a clean criminal, criminal record and of course uh, we forgot to mention that if you want to have a handgun or a general uh, guns in germany you need a clean criminal criminal record yeah, but i guess taken, that it's taken as red yeah it's taken as red yeah so I think that's covered all the big points. So let's just go through a few potential questions people might have. So uh, let's say you're a target shooter or a hunter and uh, a burglar comes into your home. Are you mm -hmm. allowed to use your guns in self-defense? Technically, yes. Um, the thing is, depending on where your safe is, it might be a little bit problematic because if you, if you own only the old safes like I do, you have to store ammunition separate from the guns. If you have a new kind of safe, these kind of z level zero safes, you are allowed to store the ammunition with the guns together, but the ammunition cannot be in the gun. For example, if I have a new safe, a z class zero safe, I'm allowed to have my handgun without the magazine, so empty, in the safe and a fully loaded magazine next to the firearm. The magazine cannot be inserted into the firearm. So it, even, if, if, even if the magazine is just in the firearm, there's no round in the chamber, this would count as loaded and that would be um, not proper storage and that would cause losing your license. So let's say you come back from a match a long way away, it's 1 a.m. by the time you get home, you're tired, you, mm -hmm. uh, you just put your, put your range bag at the end of your bed, fall asleep. You mm -hmm. had a knock at 7 a.m. For a, for a police check. Mm -hmm. What happens then? Well, you either lie and say, well, I did some training with it, or you say the truth and say, well, I fall asleep and I forgot to put it into the safe and then you will lose your license. Um, also, I have to mention something um, that uh, is quite important for me as a target shooter or a legal gun owner in general, um, because as you mentioned, uh, police controls. Normally, if you are a subject of, or a citizen of Germany, um, Police is not allowed to check your home willy-nilly. They need a search warrant for that. 
Well, that's not the case with gun owners. So basically, if you decide to become a gun owner in Germany, a legal gun owner, um, you have to forfeit one of your constitutional rights, which is Unverletzlichkeit der Wohnung, basically guaranteeing that nobody will come and search your place. Um, I have to show police where I store my guns if they want to. So basically they can come uh, at 8 p.m. and say, well, show me your safes. And if I say, well, I don't want to because uh, I want to go to bed or I want to do something else, I have to go to work or whatever, um, you can um, decline that. However, if you decline that several times, police will say, well, it seems like you don't want to show me your proper storage so we assume that you don't store your guns properly so you will lose your reliability meaning that you lose your license so in fact if you are not well if you are not a criminal but if you are um, if the police thinks that you have committed a crime they can also come to your place and ask well I want to see your home and search for some evidence when you can just tell police to pound sand and go away um, as mentioned, you can do that as a gun owner, but just once or twice, and then you will probably use, lose your license. So, what's what's interesting is this is actually quite a common thing: is uh, the random police check. And in the UK, it's part of uh, part of the firearms law, the scheduled and also mm. potential random police check. In Holland, it was I had it in eight eight years of having a license. I got checked exactly once, and I had a few antiques, off license antiques. Mm. Um, one of them was a muzzle loader, and one of the people who came to came to check, asked me how it opened. <laughs> so a very proficient policeman uh, in firearms. Yes. So I educated them on how you ch check a muzzle loading rifle mm -hmm. is clear by dropping the ramrod down and hearing if it goes bing or dunk. <laughs> nice. um, so that, that was funny. Fun. And in Switzerland, it's only in the case of the exception permits for full auto down conversions from full auto that aren't Swiss ordnance, um, things like that. Otherwise, your uh, Unverletzbarkeit der Wohnung the, uh, can you transla can translate that for uh, the English viewers? It's a slightly difficult one to translate, actually. It's, it's, it's like a, it's the, the, your, your the, home is your castle. castle. Yeah, it's the inviability of your domicile. Yeah, would be the most would be the best um, best translation. It's a slightly lumpy translation, but it literally, it's the inv inviability of your domicile. Yeah, well, the thing is, it depends on where you live. Um, I know a guy who lives near Stuttgart. And um, Stuttgart is in Baden-Württemberg, and Baden-Württemberg is ruled by uh, one certain party. Well, not they have a coalition, but um, a party that I don't like. Anyway, um, these kind of controls are very often in these kind of state. In other states where this party is not in ruling power, um, these kind of controls are not very often enforced. It also depends on um, how many policemen they have in this kind of uh, firearms agency or whatever you want to call it because normally it's part of the regular police um, if you live in a city in a big city with lots of crime uh, police normally has better things to do than check on legal gun owners uh, but if you have a ideological political party that encourages um, these kind of checks uh, they will do them quite often and um, in the law states that these controls should be free of charge. But in Baden-Württemberg, for example, um, they uh, are not. Oh. So every, just imagine this. Uh, general traffic control stop. Show me your driver's license and your uh, insurance card. Okay, everything is fine. That's $200. That's how it goes in these kind of estates. That's kind of annoying. I can imagine. And um, in my opinion, uh, it's to encourage people either to move away from these states or to um, abandon their firearms ownership. Because if you own just maybe one twenty-two long rifle uh, that's worth 100 euros and you have to pay each year 200 euros uh, control fee, uh, you might consider the idea of either moving or selling this kind of firearm. So if you have your 122 rimfire, uh, can you shoot it in your garden or only no. on a range? Uh, of course not. Uh, if you are a hunter, you can uh, shoot your hunting guns, uh, you can sight them in, in uh, the hunting grounds. You are allowed to do that, but I am not sure if there are any limits. I, I guess you are not allowed to blast like 100 rounds in the hunting grounds. I guess not. Um, normally, you are even um, air guns, so common practice in earlier days was that you do some plinking 
um, in your backyard that is not allowed because you have to make sure that this little projectile cannot leave your private property meaning uh, you would have to buy uh, basically build a homemade range and if you do that that would be a range and then you need a permit for that um, so you can either do it illegally and you lose your license if you have uh, <laughs> real guns or you have to go to a shooting club to shoot your air gun or you just do it in your basement if you have a basement that is big enough okay. and um, if you have normal firearms of course you are just allowed to use them on common ranges okay so i think that's covered what should be uh, all the points interest. i'm sure there's something we've forgotten so i'm sure there'll be plenty of people asking things in the comments below so yes uh, probably um there could you could do a, an own video about the history of the german gun laws if you're interested someday maybe i have a copy <laughs> of the of the 1928 gun laws which is kind of interesting um because that's where all the gun laws basically which are uh, in, in in place now they go back to this old um uh, law book um, and that's also where the term uh, reliability comes from and the term reliability was also later used um, by the Nazi party to disarm some political enemies so that was kind of nice yeah, to have a registry of all these people who own guns right anyway so I think that uh, just about does it thank you Alex for agreeing thank you. to blather on camera about all of uh, all of this stuff I hope Kurt has a very good time in Stuttgart seeing I'm Kraftwerk. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. Um, and thank you all for watching. If you survived this far, thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you, uh, if you're a patron, or even if you just click on ads or whatever, um, buy some bloke uh, merch. Yeah, stuff. buy some merchandise. We've got links in the description below. Have you got bloke merchandise? Uh, I don't think so yet. You need to remedy this situation. Yes, I have to. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot. See you again sometime. Bye. Yeah, I need to buy a mug. 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 Buy a mug.